Happy Thursday, guys. Fitzy e. Whipper, Kate Ritchie. It is the ye olde podcast. Oh, I didn't know whether you're breaking well, into a bit of German there. Or? How old was the first... I mean, how long are we talking when the first podcast was actually downloaded and put up? For 10 years? 20 years? Do you remember years? those days? Yeah. And I couldn't say well, that into my good ear. Podcast, what's we, that? Had we been born then? No. No, not me. You would have been. Not me. I'm a lot younger. I'm sort of fresher. Tommy, have a fresher look up. Legs. First ever podcast. What was it called? And, and who put yeah. it together? Was it Hamish and Andy or something, Tom? Oh, those in, old in guys. the world or in Australia, guys? In Australia, Tom. Just Australia's anywhere. First, first ever, ever podcast. This will be interesting. Ask um, Chat GPT, Tommy. Could be small. No, to chat. Well, no, they, they don't give know. answers like that, do they? Yeah, yeah they would. No, don't they? Don't they write things they for you? They can do whatever you want, man. They can no, cook no. you a beef stroganoff if you, you can. Ask them questions. They wouldn't yeah. know how many games of footy I played. Yeah, they would. would. You'd li- you'd say list Fitzy's achievements in football. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it would go. Do you mean Fitzy, the NFL player who Snoop Dogg follows? But they don't know. And I go, no. Ryan loser James Fitzgerald. Tom, the, first podcast. Yeah, November two thousand and four. The first Australian podcast was called Get A World. Oh, oh, who hosted Get A World? It's not. Uh, it's not bad. Yeah. I think it was uh, hosted by Courtney Act and... Um, First ever podcast. No, no. no. <laughs> um, Wait, sorry here's, about here's an update from Chat I'm GPT. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> did you pay for the app, did you? How many goals... Yeah, oh, you don't have to pay. It's free. You just got to sign up. Um, how many goals did Ryan Fitzgerald score in the AFL? Ryan Fitzgerald did not play in the AFL. He is a former contestant on the reality show Big Bu- Brother Australia. Big Bummer. And see, a TV and radio personality. See, I, I don't think it's a... Um, that only focuses on significant things. However, there is an oh. AFL player named Ryan Fitzgerald who played for the Sydney Swans and the Adelaide Crows who scored 20 goals. So it thinks you're two different Incorrect. people. Incorrect. It was 23. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, did three of them count? Maybe not. No. Not to chat no, GPT. Don't GP worry, team. I've got a T-shirt that said I've played 18 games and t- kicked 23 goals. So mm. that's not... I'm not lying. Chat GPTs, it's a myth. Okay. It's an absolute myth. He's angry. Enjoy the podcast. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Mate, this is a bit scary to talk about. Uh, Margaret, who's 52, she's spoken to Seven News overnight, uh, about the possibility of a raid that's taking place across Sydney. And you've got to be very careful. But if you look in your letterbox and you find a can of baked beans... Means there's a chance that your house might be targeted. Well, not just for a robbery. I think they're just pouring some baked beans. So, can you tell us the mentality behind this? Why are they doing that? Well, the idea is that if you check your letterbox and you see the baked beans, obviously you're going to remove the baked beans. And if you check that letterbox, oh, sorry, if the thief checks the letterbox and the baked beans haven't been removed then you know that that person's out. Yeah, they're away. Time to rob the house. They haven't checked the letterbox and they're away, so you can go in. Baked beans are messy. Uh, I would know that much. Um, That's the thing. But I would find it surprising that it has to be something as significant as baked beans. Can anyone... Baked beans. 132410, does anyone know some of the codes for robbers and what they actually do before they they raid your house? Because I think they do. It's like... um, The shoes. It's the parking inspectors with the chalk. Yep. Don't they go on up and down the, the street and there's chalk involved and they write certain signs on people's houses yep. saying, oh, well, there might be people in there or there's four people that live here. How's this? A few weeks ago, yep. out the back of our house, I'm just sitting there and we've got these um, we've got these curtains that, that you can't see into the house, but we can see out of the house. And a guy rides his bike up the side uh, of the driveway and he starts riding his bike in in the backyard of the house. Yeah. And I'm going, what's this guy doing? What, if, whose house? Uh, uh, of our house. This yeah. was a couple of weeks ago when we were on holidays. Yeah. So then I've seen him and he's and he's turning around. He's doing a UE. He's going back out the driveway. So I run down the front of the house. I open the front door and he comes down the side of my so- uh, driveway and I said to him, you right, mate? And he goes, I'm looking for a mate. Oh, aren't we going, all? Oh, okay. And I'm staring at him. I'm going, well, where's your mate? Why are you up my driveway? You don't have any friends down there, do you? And he goes, no, he's around here somewhere. He rides up the street, and I kept an eye on him. He comes back, and he's riding back, and he goes, here's my mate. And his mate rocks up, and he's got this huge bag over his shoulder. So I'm thinking that they're going through the area. And I said, are you all right, mate? What's going on? And he, the guy goes, Fitzy. 
He goes, oh, look at your Top Gun Maverick jacket. That's awesome. He goes, I'll swap you for this laptop. Opens his bag. You're kidding me. And there was a laptop in his bag. He just robbed a house. So they were basically, the guy on the bike was up, the, he was up the front. He was going to check houses all around the area to see if anyone was home. And the back door. And his mate was coming in and they were just going through houses. Did you call the cops? Yeah, I did call the cops. Oh my god! Did you give him the Maverick but jacket he was for the gone. laptop before the cops even got there? The cops rocked up at my ass, but they would, that that would, that would have been like fifteen minutes. Before. That's unbelievable. My god! So no baked beans at all? Just no, no baked beans, which was I was disappointed with because I like baked beans. So the the, the other message is: if you're wearing a Maverick, Maverick <laughs> top, top Gun you Maverick. won't get you won't get robbed. Or if you're looking for a new laptop, yeah, go get I, yourself a new Top Gun Maverick. I jacket. just found one out. If you've got baked beans in your letterbox. <laughs> I don't know why it's baked beans. I love baked beans, mate. Smothered with a bit of um, um, butter on the toast and a couple of eggs and you're happy. Over your eggs, yeah. I mean, if they can drop that in the letterbox, I'll be wrapped. Nothing beats a cosy winter getaway. Or escaping to a tropical paradise. If you're thinking about an early winter escape, whatif.com has just the place. Check out great accommodation deals across Australia on the What If app. What If. It's Aussie for travel. All right, I'm going to hold up a photo here that's made Jess, who works on the show Vomit this morning, and Tom stepped out of the studio when we were talking about this. Uh, man It's not has... your Cleo Bachelor of the Year shot, is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ed Hardy. No. Big shout out to Ed What's Hardy. What's in an Ed Hardy shirt, shirt mate? Come on. It's probably JJ's or something. Or, I don't know. Um, <laughs> JJ's. Um, remember JJ's? Is that still around? Yeah. It could have been Roger that's David. Cheap. A man has been spotted in Marion in Adelaide South. He's been to the supermarket, he's been to Westfield, and he's on the escalator there, and he's coming down. He's bought some lunch. He's bought a container of 12 chicken drumsticks, and he's eating one of them raw. Oh. He's picked it up, he's got it by the handle like it's a hammer, and he's just chewing on the raw chicken. I uh, see now. The immediate thing is you think of the texture, don't you? Ooh. It's not cooked, but see that wouldn't hurt you, would it? Well, see, uh, we were having this moments ago. I thought as soon as you eat uncooked or undercooked chicken, you get salmonella. That's a guaranteed side effect of eating raw chicken. That, that would have to be nah. chicken that's been off for a while, wouldn't it? Salmonella yeah. bacteria starts when not something all, has been around for a while. Well, yeah, not all raw chicken would contain salmonella. So you can eat raw chicken. Obviously, this guy can. Well, it says here poultry and raw meat can contain dangerous bacteria, as he said, salmonella. E. coli as well, which can... Um, can cause food poisoning. Well, doesn't some cultures... Tommy, weren't you saying some cultures eat their chicken with it? They like it pink? Yeah, some have it, Some do have it uh, quite pink, but I think if it's cooked to a certain temperature, um, then it can uh, get rid of some of that Because that's the thing. Every time we cook chicken at home, and I've done it on the barbecue, my wife will come out and spend 10 minutes expect, inspecting mm. whether there's any signs of pink and I just have to t- say to her that's the texture and the colour of the meat isn't it the it's greatest cooked. meat of all time oh mate oh, it's by, like chicken, chicken I'm sorry <laughs> It just kills everything off. I, if you're born a chook, right? How I, do you know what? I, I'd love a statistic to know how many chooks actually go through there. How many chooks die of old age? Not many. Not many, if not any. Ma- not many, and they would be pets, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, the pet chicken. If not, see you later. You're on the dinner plate, and we thank you for your services <laughs> because you're bloody tasty. Is, if is, only you knew how good you were. Oh, is, I don't if you is, could try yourself. Yeah, you cheap foul. <laughs> is this then? And going off Lisa's theory, because Bronte's sort of the same. And I think she's a lunatic for this, but I might be wrong. So you got chicken on the barbie. Yep. Use the tongs to turn the chicken over on the barbecue. Yep. She'll then bring out a second set of tongs that I have to use once they get cooked because she doesn't want the tongs that we use for the uncooked chicken having anything to do with the cooked chicken. No, the and I think she is yeah, t- a lunatic. Yeah, the tongs have been on the barbecue enough, I reckon, that yeah. they're clean. You know what? It's similar to when you take a bit of chicken out on a plate and then you put the raw chicken onto the barbecue. You then have to go and clean the plate before yeah. you then put the cooked well, chicken. See, I do on. that with the steak as well. Yeah. It's a lot of juices. And- yeah, but you know what? I do with the steak, I'll put the oil and salt and pepper on the plate and then flip the steak in it and let it sit so it's room temperature before I cook it. Yeah. So if the plate's full of salt and pepper and oil, then there's no need to kind of cook it. You just well, drizzle it on top. you still got raw meat that was on there. Uh, one Salmonella. Bloke, one bloke who saw the picture, he wrote, uh, this, cooking might, this chicken might be raw, but this bloke's definitely cooked. <laughs> Another guy said he needs to put that on the glass barbecue. I think uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, uh, Unfortunately, he's probably had a few too many before. Beforehand, that's the thing. Would you eat the raw meat of a sausage? 
Um, I don't mind it. Beef what? snag. What, just a raw snag? If you squeeze it out the end... What? I don't mind what? it. You're well, sick. I... I the, my suggestion was... Because you know these different... The, oh, God, when... Um, what is the thing when you have a child and you can then Birth. convert it into tablets? The placenta. The placenta, the placenta. yeah. Yep. I said, why can't you do a placenta sausage? Oh, that's so and, foul. No but, no, but then you cook it. Stop you could it. then cook it. You could. Sure. You yes. could put it on the barbecue. And so it would be good for you. And it's yeah, and it's good for you. No, but then Tommy, once you do cook it, that takes yeah. all the nutrients out of it, well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like a cold pressed juice, is it? Yeah, not the best. <laughs> not the best. Don't do it this morning. So eat it know. raw is the tip <laughs> yeah, we have for you today. Like right. the chicken, if yeah. it uh, eat placenta raw. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Linda and Pimble, what do you want to talk about, Linda? Good morning, guys. I'm just following up, you know, I was yeah, that funny conversation you had about suburban smells. Oh, stinks in your neighbourhood. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I live in Pimble, and just to set the scene, it's Liberal Party heartland. Yeah, right. And I smell the stench. <laughs> what are you, what are you... Constantly of greed, competition, oh. and competition. Oh, oh really? Well done, what does Linda. it smell like, <laughs> Linda? <laughs> smell up here. Well... <laughs> Kind of manif- well, I was thinking about how this manifests, and yeah. manifesting just sounds like the constant sound of renovation. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, and yeah. maintenance on the houses. About which private school your uh, child might be enrolled in from birth. What would uh, the, what would the aftershave be? What's the aftershave of a liberal? What would Peter Dutton? Does anyone? What would Peter Dutton be wearing? Old Spice. <laughs> no. Honestly, I would never get close enough to, to inhale that. Uh, he would have an Old Spice. I don't or, think it would be good. Uh, he, no, uh, he'd have a nice aftershave. No, it'd be a Lynx Africa. You, for you, sure. you, you well, well, that's not peaked in show year seven. No, no he's I mean, yeah. He's an ex copper. It might be a brute thirty three or a. Fruit 33 is a good shot. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. And it'd be the ones that are already just stored in the bathroom yeah. at the police station that you just go and Oh, that uses. one. Yeah. Oh, I loved Old Spice. I love that smell. My old man had that. Did he? Yeah, my grandfather had it. I remember Old Spice. Well, you're we're just talking about oil of Olay yesterday, which was oil of Ulan as well. That makes $2.3 billion a year. It's extraordinary. But who's using it in Australia? No one's using it anymore. Your grandmother's still uses it, doesn't she? I don't she? know. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. You know, what annoys me is that when we released our fragrance, Generique, right, which is French for generic, which can go on anything, male, female, dog, cat, yeah. toilet spray. I think it killed a couple of goldfish. Cats, unfortunately. Well, that's true. But it never really got a chance to run properly, Tommy. I reckon we put it in an order. Oh, yeah? And we reboot it. No, well, you... Reboot it, mate. I think you put in a, a fragrance of... Um that oaky kind of wood smell mm, because yes. you were into red wine or something at the time and you went too hard on it and it was actually quite sickly. <laughs> I think I just knew the work I did in the toilet and I needed something pretty strong at home. Tanya in George's Hill, what do you want to talk about, Tanya? Morning, guys. I just wanted to complain that I went to the dawn service the other morning Yep. and there was a girl, there was two girls, one on either side of me who spent the entire time on their mobile phones. <sighs> One on the left. Yep, yep. Was so busy Instagramming, and the girl on the right, and I must admit, I did have a sneak peek at yep. her message. She wrote to a friend, she's like, Oh, I'm at the dawn service. It's so incredibly special. And I'm like, Are you joking? <laughs> yeah, there's a certain protocol. I mean, it's more of a courtesy thing, an unwritten rule where the dawn service deserves a bit of focus. Yes. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it comes with but, a mindset. Do you know what we all, the, the way that we've got to look at it as well is that I think, you know, with the next generation, this is the, this is the generation. They're always going to have a phone in their hand. At least, mm. I think the way you got to look at it, Tanya, at least the girls were there paying their respects. Where's the worst place your wife has been on the phone? Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> Gee whiz. I mean, your mind well, jumps to a funeral. Well, um, I, I, we, we spoke about this on air once, but the the self the selfie at a funeral... Yeah, it's a beauty, isn't it? When you get a viewing of the body... Oh, the open casket. <laughs> oh, here I am with like a stiff that, one. That's when you're going a bit far. <laughs> one last uh, selfie before they go. Quick one with a stiffy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Tanya. You know what? You're getting a bottle of double chin gin. It's coming your way, Tan. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. No Thanks, worries. Tanya. Oh, Send us a it. selfie with it. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. 
let's talk about one woman who, uh, unfortunately, uh, she's been caught not doing her job. Uh, this was uh, this has been floating around, but I love the footage because it's so professional. There's a news reporter talking about uh, a missing person case. <laughs> It's not funny, mate. When someone goes missing, it's not funny. What mm. is funny is a live newsroom where in the background you can see an employee with their feet on the desk watching Shrek. And then I, saw her face. I love this bit. I love this bit. Again, carry on with the news service. Yeah, I know they're missing, and I'm watching Shrek. Seriously? What are people really doing at work? Do do they do that anymore? Remember they used to do that back in the day where they'd have the open office in the background of the newsroom and you could see what people were doing. Few people do that anymore. Now it's more just a green screen with an image of a generic, very full newsroom to hide the fact that there's probably three journos there and the cleaner. Although, you know, when there's a news report on uh, or they're at the main desk there, I always look to... try and work out whether the image in the background is a still, Mm. is it a photo or is it live footage because everything's live on the news do you know what they do all the time now? It used to be only for a great story it would be and in breaking news every night there's breaking news now but the breaking news doesn't equal the intensity of what breaking news used to equal. Well remember Sunrise Sunrise used to do it in Martin Place there and you would get people so committed for three hours every morning just to stand behind Kosh Hey, Dad. And just, what, like, wave a sign. Can you see me? I think they... Didn't they raise that? They turned that into a green screen, didn't they? Yeah, they... Because they just yeah. got sick of people they've, behind they've the glass. They've shifted it around. Channel 9's news camera is pointed at the Harbour Bridge. It sits on the top of... Yeah. Uh, what's the school that's directly under the bridge there? Aloysius. Aloysius. Yeah. And, uh, and famously, at one stage, a bird came and... Oh, that's ...sat right. on the camera, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Pete Overton was being eaten by the biggest magpie... I love that. ...in the world. I Did love you that. ever get um, interviewed by the news? Was there something that went wrong in your area growing up and the news service was there? Well, I told you that uh, we went to go fishing one morning, Dad and I, in the tinny, and we got down to the water and there was a 50-foot Bertram, a big boat, expensive boat, in flames. Wow. I got out the handy cam, which was obviously put in the bag for all the big fish we were going to catch. I started filming the Bertram and then ended up calling Channel 9. So you bought your boat off John Bertram. <laughs> well, that's right. He... <laughs> That's exactly right. After after a couple of Sydney to Hobart's, you and Dad were just going out on John Bertram's vote for a bit no, of fishing. We were fishing with a tinny. I rang it, and there was a reporter by the name of Dean Allen Craig, and uh, I said, "Hey, I got this phenomenal footage of a story you probably want to lead with." And he came round to the house because though, back in those days, you had to buy it. Like, you had to get it on VHS. You had to tangibly pick up this yeah the, the tape the tape and yeah. take it. I sold the footage. It made the news. Fifty dollars in the tank. Well done. And caught a snapper that day as well. Yeah. Well, we we had a scuba <laughs> diver that drowned at the Port Nalunga jetty while we were jumping off the jetty, and the news service come down, and they were asking everyone on the jetty, "Did anyone see this?" And we said, uh, "We were like 13, 14 years of age." What you And I've just stepped up and gone, "Yeah, I was doing a couple of suies. <laughs> I helped the guy take the woman off the bottom of the ocean." <sighs> and he said, "Can we interview you?" And I said, "Yeah." And he said. What were you doing at the time? I said, well, we were just, we were doing some sick laybacks and the horsies and stuff like that. And he said, well, can we get some cutaways of you guys jumping oh, off the Oh, reenacting it. Oh, Man, you don't think we were. She unfortunately um, mm, didn't ah. make the edit. Oh, she died. No, he yeah, unfortunately she? didn't make it. Yeah. Ah, but did, did the story make it? The story oh, yeah, made great. it. Yeah, yeah, we were local great. legends for a while. Did the yeah. suey make it on TV? Yeah, yeah they, they were having, that was that was in the background. Oh, And did you go, oh, I'm going to be on Big Brother one? <laughs> Make sure you vote for me. I'll be flying under the Fine. radar. Crazy. Find a girlfriend. She'd kill me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you wouldn't know what that means. I but. love Simpsons. Hey, 13, 24, 10, were you ever on the news before? Were you interviewed? Oh. Did they track you down? Because that's the other thing as well. If there was a crime in your area, do you want to be on the news? Because they could come after you. Well, you're the chick chick boom girl. Oh, where is she now? Josh in Warrywood. Hello. Yeah, how are you, boy? What's your story, Josh? Um, I was on uni holidays a long time ago, and um, I was out in the surf, paddling back out, and noticed a, a bloke floating in the water. Um, went over there, pulled him up, uh, he's frothing at the mouth, all blue. Uh, looked around for some help. Uh, my mate paddled in as well, and, you know, neither of us really wanted to give him mouth to mouth, but uh, I ended up doing it. We got him to the beach. The ambos were there. They took him away, and he ended up, yeah, he ended up surviving. Um, he, 
the funny part of the story is all my uni mates saw it. Um, and when I got back to uni after the break, I was known as the hawk. So. <laughs> just to, I mean, it would have been amazing if your mates didn't know what was going on. They just saw you with an open mouth kiss on the beach. Oh, no. Josh, Josh I, I've always wanted to know, did you catch up with the guy? Because you saved his life. Did he track you down? We went up to the hospital that day yeah. um, and shouted to the doctors and they told us, you know, he had a, a litre or so of water on his lungs and he was yeah, super lucky to survive. And he was a Czech tourist and... Yeah. Um, his mate was there and took our details, but not that we expected to hear from him, but no, we never we never oh, heard from him. That's really that's, disappointing. That's like, if it's not an annual Christmas card, it's a one-off $1,000 or a case of beer at least. Ah, oh, oh, check tourists. Yeah. No, that's what I mean about it. a lot, doesn't it? Josh, he become a superstar. Dave in Parramatta, why were you on the news, Dave? Uh, basically, at, at the end of the basketball game, we were, um, they were doing the wrap-up. Um, Steve Castino was there, and me and my mate we were kept walking behind the uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the throw. Nothing um, We'd no. stop and we'd sort of wave someone in the crowd and then we'd sort of walk back and <laughs> turn around and then walk back. Wouldn't acknowledge the camera. Um, but the cameraman found it that funny. He couldn't hold the camera. So he was <laughs> laughing that hard. Uh, so it looked like there was an earthquake did, on the news. Did Steve, yeah, Steve exactly. Carfino yeah. would get quite angry if he knew you were doing that in the background? Well, that was the beauty of it. He didn't know what was going on. All we could see was the cameraman wetting himself with laughter. Awesome. <laughs> Isn't that great, Dave? You're the star. There is nothing... When you're a, gr- a group of kids and you see that the news is on and somebody's talking, there's nothing yeah. better walking in the background and, and trying to get on. Or grabbing the microphone and saying something. Ah, oh, that's classic. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh, yeah, the life improver. Your life improver! Get ahead of getting ahead with InvestSmart's Fund Later. Understand the benefits and risks at fundlater.com.au. AFSL double two six four three five. Yeah, thanks to InvestSmart, 500 bucks up for grabs. These are just little life hacks that you learn every day just to help each other out. That's what we need to do. Don't keep it to yourself. Give us a call, 132410. Me me missus come home yesterday. Me missus come home. Okay, mate. And she said, I've got a life hack for you. Because we have an issue because Ted loves avocados, right? Yeah. And the avocado, you know how sweet the timing needs to be if you want to nail a healthy avocado. Yeah, yeah, it is. Now, cafes always have spreadable avocado, right? And you wonder, how do they do that? So what they do, because sometimes you go to your avocado and the avocado is off and you go, I missed it. I missed golden hour of the avocado. Yeah, well, so like, like a banana, really. Isn't like it? the so, banana. Yeah. Exactly right. And you know what we do with the bananas? Here's your other life hack. If they're going off, we grab them, we peel them, glad wrap, and straight into the freezer, and they then go into the smoothies. So you don't waste your bananas. Oh, well done. Banana. So the avocado is a very, very simple process. We now mash the avocado. So the avocado remains healthy and mashed. You can freeze the mashed avocado and then get one out when you need it. No, but it would still... No, one, don't, don't, don't be like starts, that. Once no. it starts to cool down, no, wouldn't it's it not. start going brown? So you've all, No, you've then got your mashed avocado, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's a spreadable avocado. You're not losing any of your avocados because they're going out of date. And you can also dip your corn chips in if you like. Oh. Wouldn't if you just put the full avocado in the freezer the same nah. thing? Why do you need to mash? It. Uh, the mash is for ease of um, defrosting and also the spreadability of it. So, Matt, please don't ask me silly questions anymore. A, okay, no, I appreciate the Man, honesty. that is a brilliant, Whipper. Great job, mate. Don't know about that one. Fiona in Marylands, give us a life hack, Fiona. Team, I am the onion queen, and this is going to revolutionise your life. Yeah? When you are chopping, dicing, slicing, peeling onions, stick your tongue out. Stick your tongue out all the way out. What? And you will not cry. You're well, taking the pee here. Does it absorb the the fumes going up That's to your right. eyes? Your taste buds absorb and your tongue absorbs the fumes. You will not shed one tear. What? You're serious. We've got to do it. Someone go get an onion from the kitchen, please. Do you know, do you know the other one? Your tongue out. Hey, <laughs> which is, which is what you do in the kitchen anyway. Tom. Fiona, I don't know if you're trying to make us look silly or Tom, which is fine. We do that most days. Yeah. The other one, Fiona, how's this for a mouth trick? If you put an ice block in your mouth and then eat a banana, right, you'll be able to blow out like you're having a vape. You'll be able to blow smoke out of your mouth. What? It's not smoke, obviously. Why would you want to do that? 
It's a big call, yeah, huge call, and I'm prepared to make it, Fee. Just let Fiona have her glory for yeah, once. I am. You, know, just, you had your avocado hey, hat. This is just sharing, mate. This is a, an invitation to share. Christina in Beecroft, give us a life hack. Um, when you have water stains on your wooden furniture from, like, coffee cups or just any moisture, yep. grab a blob of mayonnaise and a paper towel and rub it in, and it makes the stain come off. No, no it doesn't. Mayo? Yes, but it does. Does mayo yep. go into the timber? No, it wipes off with your paper towel. Just do it in circular motion. And then it just all comes off. S- sort of like p- when you're polishing something, Christina. A little bit of mayo yeah. and you polish it up. Yeah, mayo is the um, the winning item. I don't oh, know. Oh, that does it need to be? Awesome. Does it need to be the f- like full egg, it's full not, cream mayo? It's not bad. Nah, any mayo. Okay, all right. Jeez, These are Christina. really good. Let's go to Anita now from Bunyip. Anita, I need a life hack from you. Good. All right. <laughs> so you know you're cutting up an onion or a capsicum. Not only are you getting the sting. But then you go to scrape it into the bowl and it just goes everywhere because your chopping board's always bigger than the bowl. Yep. Instead of doing that, you scrape it through the handle and you've got a perfect shot and you're straight in the bowl without getting a mess everywhere. It's like a funnel. Yeah, but see... I missed yeah. miss that. You know, the hole, at the, you, the, the hole at the end of your chopping board, which is your... Car- that's your handle, handle isn't it? Yeah, that's, how you, carry that's how you pick it up. There's only a tiny little... Wouldn't, wouldn't like, the capsicum, the cut capsicum go over the hole and fall off the other end? It's hard, Anita. No, no, it doesn't. It's actually foolproof. It does work. I have tested it. It does work. It's straight through, straight God. shot. Okay. okay, my chopping okay. board doesn't have a handle in it, but I'm going to go and put one in it because Anita told me so. I right, look uh, for me. I'm it's, torn. For me, it's out of Fiona and Christina, but I don't know who to believe. Tom? The tongue with the cutting onions, Tom, or the mayo to remove water stains from do wood. You, do you know how yeah. stupid everybody is going to look tonight when they go home having heard this? Chopping onions with their tongue hanging out. I think that's why Fiona's the winner this Bye. morning, guys. Yeah. Five hundred dollars. Thank you very much, boys. Try it. I promise you, you All will right. not shed a tear. Do you know what? She's completely stitched us up, but she's won five hundred dollars. <laughs> well done, Fiona. Great Thanks, work. Thanks, Fee. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh yeah, the life improver. Your life improver. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I love a techno, technical glitch. I love this. Actually, do you know what? Oh. I'm about to tell you a story about how some guy bagged on a technical glitch some amazing business class flights. Yeah, right. But I was thinking of a sting that I could do for this, and I'm quite proud of it. Okay. Switchy and I worked on this for quite a few days. You ready for this? Let's have a listen. Let's have a listen. It's a technical glitch. Oh, bitch. Instead of it's Britney... We've yeah. done a technical glitch. Um, Do you want no, to hear it again? Re- oh, I, th- I don't think I have a choice. <laughs> it's a technical glitch. Yeah. I mean, if you hadn't explained it to, I would have been slightly thrown, but glitch and... You know what? The question I do need to ask there, has Snitchy used Britney's AI voice? Oh, it's for some of your finest work, Snitchy. Can we listen? It's a technical glitch. It does a sound like Britney. I don't know, mate. I don't know. What's the story? All right, so if, if anyone has... Well, if you've bagged a bargain before from a mistake or a technical glitch, I yep. want to hear from you, 13, 24, 10. So this is a Japanese airline, um, ANA. It's all Nippon Airways. And they had a technical glitch on their website and one Hong Kong-based man by the name of Herman Yip... Herman Yip... Bags three hundred and seventy thousand dollars worth of international flights for just twenty five thousand dollars. He was basically buying flights from where he was all around the world yeah. in business class for cheap. Give me the value of what he got. So three hundred and seventy thousand dollars worth of international flights. He got them all for twenty five grand. How do you buy and how do you where do you go and how do you spend three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars? So, with, oh my god, with flights. That's right. First class London. If you book a flight and then you can't get on on that date, that flight is still valid for another year, isn't it? I don't know, but you can get a credit note. You can change it, can't you? In COVID, it was certainly very generous. I don't know if they're still as generous. Yeah, you still get a credit note, though, if if you you can't do the flight. Yeah. So he, yep, um, 32 years of age, purchased a total of 25 tickets to holiday hotspots all over the globe. Um, First class flights, business class flights, which he nabbed as little as $445. He was leaving Japan and just travelling all around the world, business class and first class, for 400 bucks. What was the glitch on the 
the site, though? Do well, they have a was, comma in the wrong spot? Well, they, yeah, they leave he, a zero off the end of them. He thought that it was a mis- He just thought it was a, a, sorry, a sale. Yeah. So he went on there and said, this is amazing. Like, I've got time off from work, yep. and I'm just going to book these flights. Then A&A come out and said, no, this is a technical glitch. It's a I'm, technical glitch. Boom, Thank boom, you, Brittany. There's Brittany. Thank uh-huh. you. And, and so, unfortunately, they've said anyone that booked a flight between these times on the website, we cannot reward you with the flights. Oh. Do you know what? I went into David Jones one time and there was a jumper that I wanted to buy and the guy picked it up and the guy went, oh, that's not the price. It's actually meant to be this. And I said, but you've got it labelled as that. And he said, you know what? You're I'm, right. you got to want to I legally have to want that. Yeah. We've stuffed up and he even knew the legal term where he said that's an invitation to treat or something like that. He said if it was on sale, that would be an offer. See, this is there. Isn't but it? he said if you find something marked yeah. incorrectly by the company... Well, so be it. Well, see, the other one as well, the one that I love is that we'll match any price. Oh, it's a good one. See, you know, or wait, if you knew someone who worked in the industry at another store, what you could do is get mm. them just to give you a cheaper or, or really, really cheap price <laughs> on that product, and then you send it back. you got to match this price. That's always a good one. You know, DoorDash over in the States mm. had a technical glitch, and people were going on there and ordering food and drink and realising that they were getting it for free. Then they were f- ringing friends and these these delivery drivers, yep. delivery drivers were rocking up and realising that they weren't getting paid at all. So it was everyone was just getting free food and alcohol through yeah. DoorDash. Uh, the company has a point to go, hey, mistakes happen and this is one. Not your money. Like when the bank, when someone checks their bank balance and it's got $50 million <laughs> in there and something's gone wrong. Oh, this is another. In India, there was an ATM where they mixed up they mixed up the $500 notes. They put $500 oh, notes no. in the $100 note. Wow. So this is rupiah, sorry. This yep. is over in India. So a guy went in there to go get 500 rupiah out, which was around about 10 bucks, and he got 2,500 rupiah. It's a good day, isn't so it? So then he went and did it again. Then he upped it again. Then the idiot went and told mates, and there was a line-up to this ATM, <laughs> and one of the locals rang the cops. The cops come down, and this line-up went for about a kilometre, and they shut it See, down. See, if he did it twice... And then just wandered off and said, hey, come around to my place for a couple of drinks, guys. We're having the good champagne. Then he probably could have got away yeah. with it. This is what I want to hear. A mistake or a technical glitch. Did you get something for cheaper mm. when you shouldn't have? Matty in, in the Snowy Mountains. What was yours, Matt? Hey, mate. So I went to a kebab shop in a food court one day and I went and bought myself a kebab and a drink and gave the lady a $20 note. Um, and then all of a sudden, she's given me about thirty dollars in change, and oh, yes. I thought, oh, they've given me change out of a fifty, and I've done the right thing, done the honest thing, and said, like, you've given me change out of a fifty, I only gave you a twenty, yeah. and they were very appreciative of it, as it, and they ended up giving me the kebab and drink for nothing, and. Oh. Me twenty bucks back. Matty. Oh, Matty. 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 That is a yeah. win, win, win for everyone. Man. You know yeah. what, Maddie? When I went to buy my seafood at Christmas time for the family, um, the girl said to me, "I said you got to give me a discount. Come on." She said, "Okay, I'll give you five percent off." She put in five zero. Ooh, oh, half price, half price, that? price Matty. <laughs> you little beauty. Wow. So yeah. you got what got it down to five thousand dollars? It, it was a human error glitch, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We laugh. We oh, do no, laugh. Classic I lobster love joke. Stuff. Chris in Hurstville, what was your technical glitch? Hey guys, um, when I was on the student visa, I needed to extend my visa for six months, but they ended up making a typo and extend it by two years. Oh! oh that is a, a technical glitch. That is a great technical glitch, Chris. Once, once again, more like human error, but <laughs> we're going to call it technical. Yeah. That's great, Chris. Oh, so so yeah. you obviously didn't inform them. You've kept that to yourself and you've bagged a, an extra year and a half out of them, Chris. Well, really, six months after, I'm trying to submit my application for uh, the permanent residence and they say like, oh, your student visa is not ended until another half, one and a half year. Don't worry about it. What a win. <laughs> what a win, Chris. Hope. Good to have you here, buddy. Gina in Padstow, what was your technical glitch? <laughs> that... Oh, is that it? We're going to have to come back to Gina. Can we glitch. try to get it back? 
She was the last one as well. She, something to do with a wedding dress. It's such a good story. You've got to go out in a high. You Gina's know what I mean? story is the best story I think that could have ever been told on radio. But nice. she obviously had her own technical glitch. Did the man on the plane get the tickets on it? No, he didn't. What do you mean? So that was that the. Sucks. This is the thing, and this he is should have. You can't beat the man. See, okay, this is what I pose to you. Would you tell? Let's say the ATM one, right? And there, yep. it's coming f- five times the amount. You put in a hundred dollars, it gives you five hundred dollars. Do you then tell anyone else? No, you don't. No. You walk away and you shut your mouth. But then you know what? In your mind, you're thinking to yourself, the cameras are on me here. So what I'll do, I'll go away for an hour or something, get my wife to come back. Are you doing it that way? Because the other thing that you got to say to yourself is, really, do I want to be ripping off one of the big banks? They're really struggling at the moment. <laughs> so true, you'd hate to. <laughs> <laughs> do I you know, really want to rip off one of the big banks? They're just those, trying to put a meal on the table. Those poor bosses that are, that are getting... Five million dollar bonuses every year. Gina, have we tracked her down? How are you, Gina? Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, besides before, what was your other technical glitch? Oh, so, okay, so this is going back a few years now, for about, I don't know, 10, 15 years. I bought a wedding dress, and the wedding dress was um, two and a half thousand dollars. And when the um, the you know the dress shop wrote out the receipt, she put two and a half thousand dollars, and I had to pay um, a deposit of fifty percent. So she wrote down two and a half thousand minus twelve hundred and fifty. But when she put it through the machine, she only put in one hundred twenty five dollars. <sighs> so I only paid a deposit of one hundred twenty five dollars and oh. paid off the rest of the dress. Yes. By the. Um, with what I had to yeah. owe, not so, get, get, get it. So I only got the so you, about no, you, paid, you paid half of the dress, but you only paid one hundred and twenty-five dollars instead of twelve hundred and fifty. Yes, so you forgot to put the zero at the end. It's a technical glitch. Oh yes. What did you do about it? I mean, obviously, Jeannie, you said, "Hang on a minute, there's well, been an error. I want to pay more." Then, back then, we couldn't check it on our phones, right? Ah, so it wasn't said. until months later I'd gone into my bank account and realised. But I still just paid off the dress without telling her. That's a weird Nothing I can do, guys. So Nothing I can do. Not my fault. Sorry, can't help out oh, here. You stuffed up. Hey, Gina, we were talking with Kate the other day. You still got your wedding dress. What'd you do with it after? Oh, it's, it's under my bed. Oh. Would you put it back on, Gina? Oh, look, I've tried. I'm divorced now, but I've still got the dress and I don't know what to do with yeah. it. So. Gina, you'd agree too, and I'm really anti this, but so many women go on these crash diets to lose weight for their wedding day. Yeah. Uh, the problem is with that, they always look at their wedding photos and go, oh, I was so attractive back then. And look at me there in my skinny dress. Secondly, you'll never get your frock on again. Oh, wait up. Yeah, you're not wrong, Whip. No. Yeah, I'll never be able to get into that dress that's again. That's sexist. Yeah. That's and got nothing to do with sexist. That's reality. Women love men telling them that they'll never look as good as they did on their wedding day. Again. Gina, you looked fantastic back then. I love it. You I really did. did. I did back yeah. then. Yeah, back Still then. Now. Hey, you, he Gina? was a stinker, though, wasn't he, Gina? I never liked him. No. Nah. <laughs> no, he's still good. No, Are he's you in good. love now, Gina? No, not at all. Oh, she's Tom. Traffic no. dating. Traffic dating. Oh, Gina. Gina. You, you guys jump Let's on that pretty it. quick, don't you? <laughs> what? De- desperately searching for traffic daters. Gina, would have loved no. to have seen oh, it. I'll do it for fun. Yeah, okay. oh, I love fun. Yeah. yeah, but you know what, Gina? Fun often turns into serious love, which is something you... I mean, if, are you in the market for a man? Not at all. I'm happy on my oh, own. Sound perfect for the segment. Well, you, just, you just ruined the segment. <laughs> do you want to go on a date, though, Gina? Oh, I'd do it for fun. Yeah, okay, let's do this. Do anything for fun. Whoa, yeah, how whoa. good is fun? Careful with your wording, Gina. We'll get you a nice restaurant and we'll yeah. set that up, Tom. You will yeah, all right. That. As soon as yeah, the show sure, finishes today, Tom, you will organise all of that and have it back to us at 9.30. Yeah, and the good bet. thing is, Gina, if you don't find somebody you're interested in, uh, you've got a yeah. connection with Tom. He'll go on the date with you. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll go on a date with Tom. A couple of yeah. girls out oh, for dinner. What? what? Girls Sounds, night out. Oh, I love fun too. <laughs> yeah. Sounds unpredictable. Let's nice. do it. Well done. Okay. Oh, wonderful. If you missed our chat with Russell Crowe or Hamish Blake on today's Stop show, that. you can get it on the podcast on no, on the Nova Player right now. You download it, you put it in your ears and you listen to it. It's lots of fun, unpredictable fun. <laughs> That's cool. It's spontaneous and <laughs> Gina's squished. into it. Yeah, Gina loves it. She's back for traveling dating. Tomorrow, Tom, or should we do that next week? Oh, you're probably next week or the week after. <laughs>
Do you go, Tom, when we when we interview people on the show, when we pre-record or do something, yeah. do they go, hey, what time am I on? Oh, what time am I yeah, on? Quite often. Or, um, you know, they're listening out for themselves or they put it on their own socials. That's always good. So um, um, we'll do that. It's f- I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to end on a sour note right. um, because we're having fun. We're having a bit of a laugh on a Thursday. Tom's, last, found- Tom's oh. last day tomorrow. Oh, oh, no, sorry. Tom. No, I haven't yeah. been busted again. Tom's last day tomorrow. Yeah. And, Tom, if you don't get Carl <laughs> Stefanovic <laughs> and Sarah Arbo on, yep. then you're not getting a farewell party. Okay. Oh, gosh. Tom, we've oh. loved you so much here at Nova, yeah. mate. It's going to be a real sad day tomorrow. Oh, guys, thank you. It was such an easy decision to leave. I don't care. <laughs> so, um, get out. No, we're going to miss you guys and yeah. hope I'm not back on Monday. We're still trying oh. to work out why you're leaving, and that'll be yeah. one of the riddles you'll have <laughs> all time tomorrow. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, come in. Hey, hey Mish. Hey, Mish Blake is still hey, here. Is Did you know hey, it's hey, Tommy's hey, last day again? Oh, hey, guys. Why are you still oh, here? Tom, good on you, Tommy. We just, you know, every, there's why a few here? surprise guests coming in to say goodbye. <laughs> No, to be honest, we had a couple of polite declines. We oh. put the word out, we couldn't get a call. Oh, so no thank big name. Thanks for your can service. You get, can Andy come on the show tomorrow? Can you organise Andy to come <laughs> on to say just goodbye? Oh, he's it's pretty Tom's. busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tom's last day, mate, Man. and we don't know how Tim. to celebrate. It's, he did. it's Tom, it's not Tim. <laughs> sorry, mate, yeah, sorry. Typo. Yes. Typo. Tom-o-matic. <laughs> we want to look back at some of the great moments at, at Tom's career, um, like the time he was dressed as a chicken, yeah. and we had, who was the bloke came in that uh, rode a pony? The, uh, yeah, a genuine. Genuine. Tom was dressed as a chicken. His eyesight that was... That was Fernando's, wasn't it? I'm not sure. No, no. that was you dressed as a chicken <laughs> okay. in a strip club in Bangkok. That doesn't matter. <laughs> we move on that from that. for a station promotion. <laughs> Tom was dressed as... It's technically work. Uh, actually, Thomas dressed as a horse and sat on a chicken and yeah. killed the chicken. We weren't allowed to talk about no, that on air. Don't mention that the chicken died. Okay. Yeah, well, jeez, I mean, I've been part of a few farewells. Let's look back at career highlights, but this is yeah. this is both A, the quickest, and B, the most depressing. Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.